parametrics, right? We introduce this idea of a parameter, this other variable, a third variable that really defines what's going on on your curve. Okay, boy, gentlemen. We usually use a particular letter for the parameter, which is t. Okay, so if this is the Cartesian equation for our parabola here, right? What is the pair of parametric equations that we tend to use? I'll give you a clue. X equals y equals for the coordinates. Okay, so our x coordinate is 2at, and our y coordinate will be at squared, right? So this is our pair of parametric equations, and when you jam them together to get rid of the parameter, to eliminate it, this is what you end up with. Okay, great. So being that these are coordinates, we're now going to start thinking about particular points on the curve with particular parameters, which if you remember back, you know how on the unit circle, the parameter refers to the angle, right? What does the parameter refer to on a parabola? What's it actually telling you about such and such a point? If I said the parameter is 1, what does that mean about that point? If t is equal to 1, like if I said to you, okay, you know, I've got a point over here, and it's cos something, sine something. We know what the something is. What's the something here? What's the parameter mean on the parabola? It's the gradient, right? It's the gradient. We looked at it, we differentiated. And then if you take these two guys, you can either differentiate this directly and put in your x coordinate, or you could differentiate each of these with respect to t, jam them together with chain rule, and out comes the parameter, okay? So we're now looking at particular points with particular gradients. They both have this form. So if I have two points that I'm interested in, P and Q is our next available letter, right? To minimize the number of things they're trying to remember, we call the parameter at point P, little P, right? Good morning. So instead of 2AT, AT squared, this is where our parameter T happens to have the particular value P, whatever that is. So that's some constant, okay? And for Q, we'll do the same thing. So I've got 2AQ, AQ squared. So we're going to think about equations related to these points and related to features of the graph that are connected to these points. We're going to start with the simplest one, which is you've got two of them. Let's join up together. Right, so I'm going to get a new color here. Now, because this is the um, this is an interval joining two parts on a curved thing, right? We have another name for when you join an interval from two parts on a curved thing. On a circle, we call it a chord. chord, right? So on a parabola, we call it exactly the same thing. It's a chord. Okay. So this is the chord of a parabola, and that's the chord of a circle. Right? So what we want to find here based on our parametric equations is, what's the equation of this chord? What is the Cartesian equation that tells us that line that goes through P and Q? Okay. Now, the reason why having the parameter is particularly useful is because in order to find out the equation of this chord, we want to find out it's, well, one among the two things that we'll need is the gradient, right? And therefore, we already know the gradients of these two points. So that kind of makes things a bit easier for us, right? To find the equation of this line, I'm going to need its gradient, and then I'm going to put it in its two points. I could just do two-point formula, but two-point formula, if you remember, looks like this. Which, if you can't remember, already works out the gradient. That is the gradient. Okay, so using two-point formula or working out the gradient by itself is doing the same thing mathematically. Okay, it's just that as you'll see, working out the gradient on its own will yield us an insight. So let's do this. The gradient of this chord PQ, right? I've got two points. Let's just knock this out. Rise over run, yeah? Rise over run. And of course, you could put P or Q first. It wouldn't matter. It's going to factorize out in exactly the same way. Speaking of factorizing, we can make this tremendously neater than it is now, right? Someone want to give me some suggestions for what I could do to that numerator? Thank you. Yeah, me too. Not a. Okay, we'll factor out the A. Good. I can go further than that. What else can I do? Yeah, I have difference of squares up there, don't I? Very good. So I'm going to do this all in one hit. Come in. Sorry, sir. Good one. That's okay. There's my difference in squares. Dumb skis. Okay. 
to the denominator, someone else, someone else want to give me a suggestion, what can I do to that? Take out the 2a. Two 2a two is a common factor, and that just leaves me with p minus q. Oh. Okay, now, <laughs> that's what I meant to write. Now, I am about to cancel, okay, I'm about to cancel these two guys, but you guys know, I've been trying to drill it into you, right? When well, you've got things on a fraction on the numerator and denominator, you just, don't just cancel them out, because you can't always just cancel things out. I can cancel things out here, for a particular reason, I've, it's kind of implied on this diagram. Why can I cancel p minus q? Yeah. Is it because it's always positive? Um, is it because these two are always positive? That would be important if what I have was an inequality, because then like the direction of the inequality wouldn't change. For now, I just have the equation. There's something else important to this that is the reason why I can get rid of Brendan. B and Q are different. Okay, I'm kind of assuming. I'm kind of assuming because I want a chord, right? I want these two points to be not the same point. P and Q, I suppose, could be sitting on top of one another, but then this whole exercise would be rather trivial, right? So I'm kind of assuming here the reason why I can get rid of uh, the P minus Q is because P and Q are not the same. Uh, because, of course, if they were, then I'd be divided by zero, and that causes us some problems. All right, I'm almost done. It's not just the P minus Q I can get rid of. can also get rid of the A, right? Which leaves me with this. So here's my gradient. Now, just pause, right? You should always do this whenever you get a result. What does this result mean? Remember, you know what P and Q are. They represent the gradients at this point, like the gradient of that tangent, and the gradient at this point. So I, I can just quickly draw that in. Something like this, oh, use your imagination, and this, okay? The gradient P is that, the gradient Q is that. So what's half P plus Q? Yeah. It's the average. Of very good, very good. Like, this is not just some random thing. It's the average of the gradients at the ends of the chords, right? The reason why I'm pointing this out to you is for two reasons. Number one, it should kind of make sense, right? You have a look at my two blue lines and my green chord, right? You should expect that, like, if you're trying to get the gradient of this thing, right? If you make, say, one of these ones, make it further along, okay? So that means as I go further and further, the gradient is getting steeper and steeper, more and more positive, right? Does that make sense? Well, as I move this guy further along and its gradient increases, what will happen to the gradient of the chord? It will also increase because it's angling up like this and it's getting steeper. I'm going to animate this for you in a second, okay? So you'll see. That's the first reason. Secondly, I want you to be able to remember this very easily. This is the first, this is going to form the first of many equations that you don't have to memorize, but it's helpful to know what they are so that when you do get them, you'll be like, oh yeah, that's familiar. I don't want you to just think, oh, it's random algebra. It's not random algebra, it's an average. You guys know what averages are. Okay, I have a gradient. What else will I need to get the equation of this chord? I need a point, okay? Now, it just so happens that I know two points that go through, uh, that are on this chord, okay? So here's what I'd like you to do. Um, if you're sitting in a pair, I want the left-hand person in the pair to take the left-hand point. Take Q, okay? Uh, and if you're the right-hand person, then I want you to take the right point. If you're sitting by yourself, you can pick whichever you like, okay? So we know it goes through both of these points. Crunch it out, we've got the gradient, let's put it into point gradient form. 